Hey guys, I am still at Maxis checking out SimCity, and I've now got the game's lead designer with me, Stone LeBrandy. How are you doing? I'm doing well, thank you. Um, you guys might recognize his voice, at least, uh, from a lot of those SimCity walkthrough YouTube tutorials. Um, obviously, you know, uh, the visual changes are a huge difference in this one, uh, but you guys have also made a lot of changes to the kind of underlying systems of the game, right? Yeah, the glass box engine that powers everything controls all of the systems from not just the people walking around, but the fire system, how it spreads, the crime system, how criminals level up and do crimes and get put into jail. So water system, every system is all controlled by that same simulation layer. We're just using it in different ways depending on the system. How is that going to change the gameplay experience for people who are playing it? Well, people that are used to playing SimCity 4, for instance, it's going to be a lot different because you actually have to care about the relationships between the buildings now. Where before you could just put down a police station, it would have this area of effect around it, and you'd be protected. Now you actually have to worry that your police cars can get from that police station to the crime. And so that planning and setup of where the trucks are, where the commuters are, where your train tracks are, really matters a lot in this game. How does that come into the multiplayer aspect of the game? The main part with multiplayer is that you can get two different people together and they can specialize in different ways. So in a previous version of SimCity, if I built a city and it was only houses, it would fail because houses can't survive by themselves. You need jobs, you need shops. But in this version, I could make that suburb city and I could have you make the industry and the commercial and my sims will commute to your city in the morning and they'll come back at night again. Mm -hmm. And so this lets us specialize our cities a little more and we can basically gives you a lot more variety of cities that you can play with. How exactly are the actions of people in other cities going to affect yours? So there's a lot of different interrelationships between the different cities within a region. So for instance, if I have a big crime problem, my criminals will spill out into your city. You could then fight back by putting more police force in your city and your police will come into my city and start arresting my criminals. Um, so it's always this back and forth. It's never like, I can hurt you, but you can't fight back. So we tried to make it as balanced as we could. If we both decide to make crime cities, then we're gonna have a problem in that case. Uh, but also in the terms of resources, I may be mining coal, for instance, that you burn in your coal power plant. And at some point, let's say I run out of coal. Now we have a problem because you were supplying pro power to the entire region, and I was giving you the free coal to do that. But now we have to come up with another way of doing that. Mm -hmm. um, so that may mean we have to switch over to some renewable energy like solar or wind power, or it may mean that we have to start importing coal from the global market. And the global market is something that's bigger than any one region. That's actually spread across all the players are all part of the same global market. Mm -hmm. So if everybody's burning coal, the price of coal will go up. If everybody's trying to sell coal, the price of coal will go down. And that's across every game on the server at the same time. Okay, so if, if uh, I'm playing with somebody who is, say, completely reckless, and their city is riddled with crime, and it's spilling out into my city, is there anything that I can do about that short of just, you know, switching to private instead of public? Um, well, like I said, you could have the crime system. So like you could go into, are you the police system, sorry. You could go out, build an awesome police station, put some helicopters on it, get a bunch of vans and go out and patrol and basically go out and pull all those criminals off the streets and put them in your jails. And then that player who's trying to grief you or spoil your game by making all this crime, you're actually spoiling their game by arresting all the criminals before they have a chance to react to you. It seems like there's, I don't know if this is the right term to describe it, but it seems like the game is almost more socially aware now. Um, just in terms of like a lot of the, the functionalities in it, like pollution and stuff, um, but also just the way it's been marketed so far. Is there some personal stake in that for you, or is that like something that you feel strongly about? Yeah, I do feel strongly about it, actually. We, we're an entertainment product, we're not educational. We don't really go out there and say, we have a message that we want to tell the world. But when you play the game, we want you to understand the world around you a little bit deeper from playing our game. And this has been a hallmark of SimCity ever since the beginning. Like I remember playing SimCity 2000 and then going outside and seeing my neighborhood in a way that I had never seen it before. Um, and so we want people to get that kind of feeling of you're a little bit smarter now, you know, a little bit more what's going on in the real world because you played our game. Um, but the real world has good and bad qualities to it. For instance, coal power, yes, it's really dirty, it's evil, but it's super cheap. And if we didn't have coal power in the real world, electricity prices would be very expensive right now. Um, we have green energy, but that's really expensive. It's a little flaky if the wind's not blowing, if the sun's not shining. So we wanted to make sure we captured all of that in this game. Mm -hmm. That there's not one right answer, you should always do this, and that's good, and this is always bad. 
there's pros and cons to everything you do in our game. Yeah, and it seems like this, the individual sims will react to that as well. Um, like I noticed uh, some people in my city saying like, oh man, I'm really glad the mayor's like doing this green power initiative. I was like, that's cool. Yeah, so they will react and they'll help, they act kind of as a tutorial for new players too. Mm -hmm. So if you don't know what to do, you can just ask your citizens and they'll give you uh, hints and clues about what's going on. Yeah, it seems like there's definitely more of an emphasis on the individual sims as well in this one, right? Yeah, I have a sign above my desk that says cities are people, not buildings. Mm -hmm. And it's really easy for us developers to get in this trap of SimCity of saying it's about buildings and police stations and fire stations and garbage dumps. But real cities are about the people that are in them. And so we made a really conscious effort early on was to try to bring up that city human level instead of the city building level. Is there ever going to be any kind of connectivity or crossplay between this and The Sims? Is that something that you guys would ever be interested in doing? Um, it's something that gets talked about a lot, but it's just off the scope of what we're doing in this game right now. So you never want to say never down in the future, but for this game, it's just about like managing that city and not about managing the people in it. So we've made a decision really early on that you can't control the people directly. You can only control them indirectly. And that kind of gives the game its own personality because you have these people that you wish you could tell what to do, like go to work over there, but a real mayor can't do that. A real mayor can't say you're restricted to only sit in this part of the city and you can't wander over here. And we wanted to make that feel like the people, no matter what you do, they're going to leave if they don't like you. Mm -hmm. And you can't do anything about it. You can't force them to stay. Yeah. Um, modding is also a question uh, that I know a lot of people are curious about. Do you guys have plans for that at all? Well, we know that the Maxis community is like heavily mod, you know, there's a lot of mod friendly things with The Sims and SimCity 4 is still around 10 years later because of the mod community. So we love those guys and we want to support them. We hope to eventually give them tools to be able to mod. It's just something out of scope again for the launch date. But we know those guys, we love those guys, and we want to make the game like as best as it can possibly be for them. Mm -hmm. That's just something in the future. I'm sure you're aware of the whole DRM controversy and how it's it's maybe not generated the best of goodwill towards this game. I, I'm curious as to what your personal thoughts on that are, and if you ever feel like hurt by the fact that somebody would not purchase your product or you know boycott your product uh, just for something proprietary like that. Um, yeah, I mean, of course, you want people to play your games. You spend years and years working on them, and you want as many people to play them as possible. But there's different people in the world, and they have different, like, some people, you know, it's a free world. We can't force people mm -hmm. to buy our software. Um, so if they don't like it, then they, we can't force them to buy it. Um, but hopefully, you know, word gets out. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of games out there right now that require you to be online to play them. Um, and, you know, we hope that people will play it, try it out, and enjoy it for what it is. Is there anything that you're particularly proud of that you that you worked on that you think is really neat in the game that um, people should know about? I think the thing I'm most proud of is that we were able to get all these systems to interact and work together. So it's not like a system lives in isolation and it's just off on its own. Every system talks to every other system back and forth. So the pollution system talks to the health system, for instance. Mm -hmm. um, and you've got to get all of those balances, inputs and outputs all set up. So I, I couldn't sing out any, any one little thing, but the total, the fact that it all came together into one gigantic city is just amazing and really impressive, the work that this team yeah. has done. Yeah, lots of math involved there, I bet. Yeah, a lot of spreadsheets. <laughs> a lot of spreadsheets, yeah. my favorite. Well, thank you so much for chatting okay, with me, Stone. thank you, Kara. Uh, March 5th, guys, in North America, SimCity is coming out. Are you ready? I'm ready. He's I'm ready. ready. All right, thank all you. Right. Thank you.